there's another aspect to it, which is if you would look at the auction uptake, right? Auction uptake doing something like this would basically show uh, a kinetics like this one, right? And then at the end, you reach, so to speak, VO2 max, and then it's going down, okay? So that's approximate VO2 would look like. How does that relate to lactate? So how do we get the VO2 max? This lab level accuracy I'm going to show you. This is because whenever the body, the cell, breaks down glycogen and glucose and produces lactates, there comes an ATP production, there comes an energy production with it. And that's also proportional. So once we know the lactate production rate, we know also how much energy is derived from glycolysis. And then the same thing applies if we know the total energy demand because we know the workload, then all the remaining energy that's not coming from anaerobic metabolism has to come from aerobic metabolism. So therefore, it is possible to very precisely get the oxygen uptake for each of those steps and therefore also get the maximum oxygen uptake at the end of the test. Or in other words, think about it this way. If you're coming from an exercise physiology background or you're familiar with traditional VO2 max test, putting on a mass, attaching you know, to a metabolic heart, what's actually happening here? The athlete, the subject, is exposed to a workload that is very, very high, that leads to exhaustion in a few minutes, either as part of a REM test or as part of an all-out test. So the workload is higher than the amount of energy, the amount of power that can be delivered by the aerobic metabolism, therefore maxing out VO2, therefore VO2 keeps going up until it reaches maximum, maybe reaches a plateau, leveling off, all these kind of things, okay? Fine. So what you could argue is that the area, so to speak, below the blue curve is all the energy, it's everything that is covered by the aerobic metabolism. Okay, then there's a slow component and so on and so forth. So this here, to speak, is the O2 deficit that is covered by creatine phosphate. You can ignore that, but basically this amount here, so to speak, would be covered anaerobically by the glycolysis. By the glycolysis. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when you do a classic test with a metabolic heart, you impose a load which is higher than what the aerobic metabolism can deliver. Again, either at the REM test, at the end of the REM test, or as a single bout of exercise. And you just measure the aerobic part and you ignore basically whatever additional energy was delivered by the glycolytic metabolism. What I'm showing you here is what you can do with lactate is you look, so to speak, at the flip side of the very same coin. You look at how much energy comes from the glycolytic, from the lactate part, and then everything else at the end of the exercise has to come from oxygen uptake. And